church. Woo! Good to have you here this morning. It looks like we're going into the Thanksgiving season, um, so we want to prepare you for that. Um, Psalm 136.1 and 107.1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, um, for he is good. His love endures forever. So why don't we stand up and sing a classic song that talks about giving thanks to the Lord. Go ahead and stand up, and we will praise him. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Your love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. Your love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and a house stretched out. Shine your name, O oh Lord. 
There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing.
that shadows can deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is life forever lived in high Your name cannot be overcome Your name is life that shadows us to not only feel your peace, but to be instruments of peace, Lord. I pray that you will deliver us of all fear of anything that's happening, for your word says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So we pray, Lord, that you help us to just walk into your peace hear your quiet, still voice. Praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So with that, why don't we all greet one another? Thanksgiving is coming. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Instead of a big hug, maybe you'll give them a nice elbow bump.
everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to you. We have something very exciting to do this Saturday. We will be decorating this room for Christmas. So, so please come at 9 o'clock and we'll be working from 9 through 11. Okay. Uh, we have collected the Samaritan's Purse uh, Christmas boxes, and I'd like to make an announcement that we have 13 or 14 of these boxes. And we just praise God for all of you who have uh, given them. And if you want to know what goes in it, there's things for personal like soap and washcloths and, and towels, things for school, and also fun toys. Toys are very important for kids, aren't they? And it goes anywhere from 2 to 14. You got to remember now, when a child turns 15, they no longer get a box. So 14 is the cutoff time. Okay, we're now going to take up the tithes and offerings. You may give online, mail in a check, or deposit it in the offering in the locked tithe, tithing box, which is on your left. Uh, another thing, in your bulletin, you have these cards. I ask, what do you do with them? We don't want to throw them out. So you have a choice. If you don't fill them out, these are mainly for new people. So for us, we will either leave them on your chair or put them in a tithe box so they aren't wasted, so they can be used again. Okay. Uh, let's pray now for our offering. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us. Sometimes we forget, but as you have been faithful in the past, you are faithful now and in the future. Help us to list the different things that we are so thankful for. Our family, salvation, food, a place to live. Thank you so much for all of this. Thank you that we're living in America. Thank you for your, your presence in our lives. Bless the giver, Lord, and multiply it to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Now what we're going to do, we're going to be listening to the children' uh, blessings, <clears throat> uh, the little daycare that we have over here, they were invited to come in and they played bells and that's what we're going to listen to now. And the name of it is, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And the children will be doing more of these as we get closer to Christmas.
Amen. Amen. Great job, kids. Wonderful job. Thanks, Alice, for leading them. And uh, such a beautiful song. Such a beautiful song. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Micah. Welcome in person. Welcome online. Ah, nothing better than church on a Sunday morning. Amen. <laughs> and uh, with some coffee in hand and your Bible. Uh, nothing better than church on a Sunday morning. Uh, in fact, if you have your Bibles, you can open up to Psalms chapter 18. And there is a bunch of birthdays in November. I know there's always birthdays, but November is close to me. My dad is on the 19th. Happy birthday, Dad. Uh, Selena's birthday was on Friday. Happy birthday, Selena. Um, tomorrow, the 23rd, is Naomi, my daughter Naomi's birthday. Happy birthday, Nay. Tuesday is my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Sigurd. And also, Ron Wall's birthday. Happy birthday, Ron. And uh, Friday is Azariah's birthday. So uh, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, lots of parties, lots of celebration going on. All right, go ahead and bring out your Bibles. Open to Psalm 18. And I got to go over to Wes Hayes' house, and he uh, will be reading our scripture for this morning. So take a listen. Psalms 18. Well, good morning, Plaza. I just uh, have the privilege of reading a scripture for us this Sunday before Thanksgiving, so bear with me. And then uh, at the end of this, I want to share a few words of thanks to, to my Plaza family. So here we go. This is Psalm 18. I love you. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangle me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountain shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemies, great bolts of lightning and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and I have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanliness, of my hands in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful, to the blameless you show yourself blameless, to the pure you show yourself pure, but to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning, my God turns my darkness into life. With your help I can advance against 
a troop with all my God I can scale a wall as for God his way is perfect the word of the Lord is flawless he is a shield for all who take refuge in him for who is God besides the Lord and who is the rock except our God it is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect he makes my feet like the feet of a deer he enables me to stand on the heights he trains my hands for battle my arms can bend a bow of bronze you give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me you stoop down and make me great you broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn i pursued my enemies and overtook them i did not turn back till they were destroyed i crushed them so that they could not rise they fell beneath my feet you armed me with strength for battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as dust borne on the wind. I poured them out like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations, people I did not know are subject to me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. Foreigners cringe before me, they all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives, praise be to my rock. Exalted be the God, my savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you among the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Well, Lord, uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for the promises. And as we celebrate this coming Thanksgiving, uh, I just keep thinking of those promises, and those promises are loaded with things that we uh, take for granted sometimes. In those promises, there is uh, a plan and a purpose, and a plan not for us to be harmed, but to be uh, fruitful like you promised to Jeremiah. The purposes, I think, sometimes are for us to have our character built and to equip us to go out and minister to the other those people that uh, don't know you lord and there's also provision in this and there's protection in your promises lord and the victory for us is in all of that that we get to praise you at the end of it lord so as we celebrate thanksgiving i'm just thankful that it's a day that the world hasn't attached a santa claus or an easter bunny or a goblin or something to it's just basically a time to get together with family and friends and praise you and thank you for all your many blessings. And I want to thank my Plaza family, all of those who uh, prayed for me and Sandy as we've gone through this tough time, but uh, just to know that we are blessed to be kids in your kingdom. So let's remember that little uh, song that we sing, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart, Give Thanks to the Lord for all he has done and uh, and now uh, let the uh, poor say I am rich and let the weak say I am strong because of what the Lord has done so God bless you and your families this Thanksgiving and don't forget there's promises provision protection plan purpose and praise in all of his things that he does for us thank you And as I listen to Wes share, and I listen to this Psalm 18 that King David wrote, I'm reminded again that our God delivers, our God is a rock, he's a refuge, and we can take comfort and security in that today, can't we? I know it's easy to ask the question, why do terrible things happen to good people? And it's oftentimes something that we wonder, because we think in, in one breath you say, God is so good, and he delivers, and God rescues, and God helps, and God is amazing. You can say that in one breath, but in another breath, we also realize 
terrible things happen. This morning, I would suggest, I mean, a simple answer uh, for terrible things happening to people. First is because of sin. There's sin in the world, and sin produces all kinds of misery and corruption. Sin is brutal. The second is there's people who cause trouble. They're deliberate, and they're purposeful, and they're causing mischief. Third is because of Satan, troublemaker himself. And fourth, sometimes it's because of our own foolish decisions that bad things happen to us is because of uh, our own wrongdoings. I would love, as we all would, to be in a world that's free of sin, free of pain, free of heartache. But that's the reality of this, this broken world that we live in, isn't it? And we won't get to truly experience freedom and full victory and, and no tears and no pain until we get to heaven. And that's a day that I know each of us are looking forward to. For now, we have to realize no one on earth, though, is perfect. None of us are. There's not going to be a, a flawless day. There's not going to be a perfect day, a perfect life, because that's not, that's not how it is. I'm not perfect. Are you? <laughs> I'm not flawless. Are you? I'm, I'm not uh, someone who's, like, above making mistakes. You could ask my wife. I'm sure she'll give you a big old list <laughs> of my flaws and errors and mistakes uh, not just for like a year, but like daily. <laughs> like here's Micah's daily mistakes because that's my life. I'm sure you'd say that's yours. That's the world we live in. We are a mess. <laughs> and that's why more than ever, we need God. Amen. We need God because he's faithful. He's strong. He's a fortress. He's someone that we can go to over and over and over again every day for the rest of our lives. The title of my message this morning is, My God Rescues. My God Rescues. We're going to see this in the life of King David. And it's such a beautiful display of this in Psalms 18. The first is that David um, called on the Lord. We get to see his response to God. How did David pursue God? We're going to see first that he called on the Lord. Verse 3, it says, I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I've been saved from my enemies. Verse 6, he says, In my distress, I, I called to the Lord. I cried to God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. What a beautiful picture of David calling and God hearing and responding. I think of that silly song that most of us know. Uh, when, you, when you say, who are you going to call? And you say, Ghostbusters. Thank you, Jerry. Who are you going to call, Ghostbusters? <laughs> And let me ask you this morning, who, who are you going to call? Who, when, when you are in distress, when you are in this painful moment, this painful time in your life, who will you call upon? My, I, had a, I had a good friend, and uh, he was married. He's married. He has a beautiful family. Guess who the first person he always calls is? It's his mom. <laughs> yeah. And he would always be like, oh, my goodness, I'm going to call my mom. Something good would happen. I'm calling, my, get my mom on the phone. Something bad would happen. Get my mom on the phone. And he was always calling his mom. I was like, you're not calling your wife? You're not calling, like, you're calling your mom? That's awesome. And that was his go-to person to call. Like, th when I'm in, a, in a, a bind or when something good has happened, I'm calling my mom. Let me ask you, who do you run to? Who is going to be the person that you reach out to? Who is it going to be the one that you say, you know what, I, I need to call upon this person today? Is it going to be the Lord? We have to make that decision. Is God going to be at this place in our life when, when we're going through things that we say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to call upon the Lord today. I'm going to call upon his name. I'm going to cry out to him. Think about this acronym. Uh, the next time you need to call upon the Lord, I was thinking about this because there's moments where you think, do I really need to call upon God? Can I call upon someone else? Can I go to somebody else? And the answer is call upon the Lord. The first in this acronym is that God cares. I can call to him because he cares. He cares for me. He cares for my family. He cares for my life and what's going on. God cares. <laughs> Psalms 55 verse 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. I know I can cast everything that's going on in my life, every burden, every worry, every trouble, I can cast it upon the Lord. A is that he's available. I love that Nahum 1.7 says, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Did you know that God is available to you? 
God is available. And the next one is that he listens. Psalms 34, 17, it says, When the righteous cries for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord hears and delivers. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful that God listens. Do you ever have someone in your life who doesn't listen? You talk to them and, like, and you ask, are you even listening to me? My wife asks me this on a regular basis. Are you listening? And I have to reply, I think so. <laughs> the Lord listens. And the second L is that he loves. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Nothing at all. I can trust God because he cares for me. He's available. He listens. He loves me. I can call upon the Lord. I love this in David's life is that he calls upon the Lord regularly. As a warrior, as a king, as a mighty man of God, as someone who even messed up and made mistakes, David chose to call on the Lord. The second thing is that David walked in God's ways. Verse 21 and 24 says, I have kept the ways of the Lord, David says. He says, I'm not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. It's interesting. David says, I have been blameless before him, which is to say, when I mess up, when I sin, when I stumble, when there is something sinful that goes on, David handles it. In other words, he confesses his sin. He repents. He makes it right with somebody else. He, he turns from that way of sinning because we all know that David wasn't perfect. David had a, a laundry list of, of wrong things that he did. And this doesn't mean that life is going to be without sin, that we're going to be sinless. This means that when we sin, we have to say, you know what, I, I need to handle this. When God reveals it, when we're convicted, what we do is we bring it to God and say, God, I, I, I repent. I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? And when we do this, this is what it means to, to be blameless. That when I sin, I'm willing to deal with it. It doesn't mean being perfect. It means when I sin, I'm willing to deal with it. This is how David can say, I've, I've kept the ways of the Lord. Because even when he would get knocked off track or when something uh, sinful would happen in his life, he, he would come back. And he would say, you know what, God, I, I need to get back on track. I need to get right with you again. David always came back. He turned towards God again. This is resiliency. I love this. Can we be a people who are resilient? A people who bounce back when we fall, when we stumble, and when we get caught in, in some kind of sin trap or evil way of thinking or evil way of speaking? Can we be those who are resilient? who say, you know what, I, I need to turn back to God again. I need to be resilient. I need to be someone who bounces back and follows God again. My son, Neff, he's, um, I don't know, about two feet tall. And all he does all day is literally falls all over the place. He just runs around, he falls over, he tips over, he spills stuff, he trips, he jumps all around. This is just his life, falling down over and over and over again. And what you got to know about two-year-olds is these kids are resilient, aren't they? They bounce back. You're like, that would have taken me out for a week if I felt like that. But this kid bounces back immediately. And I'm like, that, that's amazing. Good job, son. And this is the kind of resilience that we can have as Christians. The kind of heart that we could have to, to bounce back. You know what? I, I messed up. Maybe you'll be in a pattern of sin for months. Maybe even years. Today, I would encourage you. Resilience. Be willing to bounce back. Be willing to to have God's strength be with you and keep the ways of God. Bounce back even when we fall down. Be resilient. Number three is that uh, David's strength was in God. David's strength was in God. I love this. David is calling upon the Lord and he's willing to walk in God's ways. And David, even as a strong king with a mighty kingdom, he knew that his ultimate strength was in God. There's moments in life where we all would admit, I, I, there's no way I can get through this without the strength of God. There's no way. Uh, you know, just hearing Christine and Dara Williams, Christine is doing great. She, she's giving reports of good news and, and recovery and strength. And we all know in those moments that there's no way that we can get through that without the strength of God. Amen? 
And we praise God for these moments where we're like, God, there's no way I would have been able to do it without you. And we realize that there's situations where only God can help. Like, there's no way I could do it without God's help and assistance and strength. In crisis moments, you notice this is one of the times when people will turn to God. Even people who are far from God, they will turn towards him because they realize, I, I don't have enough strength in myself to do this. I, 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 I can't. And they begin to search. And, and wouldn't you know that, it, that God's strength is available? That when we cannot do it ourselves, we realize I'm weak, I'm not able, God is able to help. David uses this, this beautiful battle imagery to describe um, God's strength available to him. And uh, verse 29 says, With your help, God, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Verse 32 to 35 says, It's God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. This is what I like to call armed and dangerous. (laughs) David is ready to go because he has the strength of God available to him. David was so dependent on God, and we see... Um, that no, none of his war stories were complete without the strength of God coming through. The strength of God being stamped on that situation. How did, did, how did David run fast? It was because of God. How did he stand tall? Because of God. How were his hands ready? It was God's strength. How was he sustained? It was God. This morning we can realize that not only is God uh, available to us, but his strength is available to us. And and this is something that I have to continually come back to because I get weak all the time. Sometimes I feel fragile. I feel incapable. I feel like, am I even going to be able to make it through this season? In those moments, we can choose to turn to God and, and realize, you know what, right now I need God's help. And God is willing to give us his strength. David knows it's a good idea to rely on God. How about you? Do you realize this morning it's a good idea to rely on on God. How and why? Why can we rely on God? The last three points for this morning. Uh, Number four is that the Lord is my rock. We can rely on God because he is our rock. We can be reminded this holiday season that God is our rock. David says in verse two, I love you, Lord, my strength. He says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. You can see David reflecting on, on moments in his life when he's had to uh, have the Lord's protection. I was thinking about Psalm, 1 Samuel 23, 25 to 28. I can imagine David reflecting on this moment where he's hiding from Saul in the rocks. Saul's entire army has come to get David. And David with this little band of his ragtag crew of warriors, they're hiding out. They're like, oh no, Saul's going to get us. And it, the Bible tells us they're scurrying through the rocks and up the hills and in caves. And, and uh, David's like, where is Saul? Where is his army? And they're scurrying around trying to get away. And this moment when David is hidden in the hills, he knows that this rock represents God. This hiding place represents God taking care of him. This, this moment of, of being in a stronghold isn't just the rock on the side of a mountain. It's God in heaven who's protecting him. And David looks out and, and Saul gets a call that the, some other issue ha- he has to tend to. And, and Saul leaves and David's like, geez, God, th- thank you. <laughs> like, they were about to wipe me out and you delivered me again from the hands of this man who is pursuing me. These rocks, these hiding places, are symbols of who God is, who God is for us. He is our rock and our refuge. God is the true rock in our life. Amen. Number five is that the Lord rescues. The Lord rescues. Verse 16 through 19 says, He reaches down from on high, and David says, He took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me into a spacious place. He rescues me because he delighted in me. I love that. He rescues me because he delighted in me. Remember this morning again that the Lord 
delights in you. And that's why he is so willing to come to your rescue. Did you know that uh, King David even had to flee from his own son? Isn't this remarkable? His own son, Absalom, thought, you know what? I'm going to steal the throne from my pops. I'm going to take the throne. I'm going to overthrow his, his rule, and I'm going to be king. And so he, he set himself in, in this direction to, to bring, to lure the heart of the people towards himself and say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have all these people love me instead of my dad. What a moment with a dad and his son. King David almost lost his throne to his son who was rebellious and, and who was set against his dad. And such a hard moment to see your own son turning the heart of people from you to himself. In 2 Samuel 15, we see that it works. Absalom actually wins the heart of the people. And David says, all right, guys, pack your bags, and we're going to run. Did you know that even sometimes great warriors have to flee? Great warriors have to run. And this was this moment where Absalom turned the heart of the people towards himself. And David says, guys, we need to go. And eventually Absalom was routed, and David remained king. But there's these moments where we realize, and David realized, God, I, I don't know how you did this, but it was because of your support. You brought me back into this, this, this spacious place, this, this place of rescue, this, this place of, 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 of safety and security. Wow, thank you, God. Even though my son sought to steal my kingdom, God rescued him. God has this rescuing power. God has this kind of ability for us um, to keep us and, and to rescue us. I don't know about you, but there's moments in my life where I realize there's no way, there's no way that, that I would have been able to get through this without the rescuing power of God. Time and time again, we see that God rescued David. Time and time again in my life, I'd say God is my rescuer. Number six, and we'll close with this, is that the Lord gives victory. The Lord gives victory. Verse 50 says he gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. What a testimony that David had. The Lord gives me victory. And not just with me, but with all my descendants forever. I'm so glad that this is our God. That, that God is a God of victory. That God is one who gives victory. I, I love this imagery of, of you and I being able to be those who are victorious. And if you are in Christ, if you are a Christian, you know that the greatest victory is Jesus defeating sin and defeating death on the cross. Amen? Amen. And we realize that this victory is, is remarkable. It, it totally changed the, the tide of, of, of history because now we don't have to fear death and fear evil. God is victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? The greatest victory of all time. Jesus is alive. I love this passage in 1 Corinthians 15. 15 verse 55 through 57. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we close this morning, I would encourage you to think again about Jesus, who he is in your life, who he is for your family, what he's accomplished, and the, the victory that he has achieved. Death Really, death in itself is not the issue. The real issue is that if I were to die tonight in my sins, if I was to die tonight not forgiven, not pardoned by God, then death is terrible. Death, you could say, is, is nasty because I'm dying in my sins. I will encounter this sting of death. As Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. I'm, I'm, I'm dying in my sins and I'm an enemy of God. The sting is not in death itself. The sting is in sin when I pass away. I pass away as a sinner. When I remain in my sin, I remain an enemy of God. I remain distant and separate from God. If that's not bad enough, sin has this unexpected ally of the law. The law is divine in origin. 
God gives the law, and as Paul says, he, he can call it holy and righteous and good because of this. It, it is a divine law. It's, it's good, but Romans 7, 12 tells us that the law cannot bring people to salvation. The law shows we are sinners. It shows a standard we could simply never reach on our own. The law sit back, sits back and watches as we are condemned in our failure and our shame because we can never fully keep the whole law of God by ourselves, in our own strength or our own willpower. We just can't do it. The sting of death, when I die in my sins, I'm separate from God. Sin gets me, the law gets me, it's a mess. The scripture says, but thanks be to God. He gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, but thanks be to God. We can say again today, thanks be to God. We have victory in Christ Jesus our Lord. We know who can defeat sin. We know who can remove this thing of death. We know who can fulfill the law. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Romans 6, 9 tells us that Jesus has abolished the law. 2 Timothy 1, tells, 10 tells us he satisfied the law's claims and he's redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3, 13 tells us he's replaced the reign of sin with the reign of grace. Thanks be to God. We have this, this wonderful victory in Christ Jesus. This is our God who, who gives victory. And I love this, this picture because as a, as a Christ follower now, I've been forgiven of my sins. I've been given a brand new life. I've been made brand new again in, in Jesus. And in my life now is a, a life that reflects victory. My life doesn't have to be miserable or sad or depressed or weary. I, I don't have to, to groan all day long because of sin anymore. Sin has been conquered in my life. Now my life represents victory. It represents light and life. It re represents the fruit of the Spirit. It, it represents good and truth and, and holiness and righteousness. And This is the, now the, the pattern of my life. And I see it's because God gives victory. I can have this, this pattern and this way of victory because this is my God who gives me victory in Jesus. Amen. Let me pray for us this morning. God, today we, we're grateful. We say thank you, Jesus. As we re reflect on, on David's life, we, we're glad for this picture of, of what it looks like to follow you, what it looks like to cry out, what it looks like to, to get strength and what it looks like to, to get back up again when, when we fall flat on our face. God, we want to be the kind of people who, who pursue you faithfully for the rest of our lives. God, this morning, we, we rejoice in who you are. We rejoice that you are our rock, that you are our refuge, that you are our deliverer. God, there, you're our shield. We can go on. The list goes on and on and on. God, we're grateful for you. We're grateful that uh, you give victory. We're grateful that our, our lives can represent victory. Jesus, for those of us who um, are struggling with, with shame, with, with guilt, with um, defeat, God, I pray you'd speak to us this morning and remind us of your love for us, of your care for us, of your love and your ability towards us. God, would you remind us of who you are in our life? And would you remind us of, of the great uh, victory that you've achieved in our lives? God, we love you. And this morning we want to say again, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, I want the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence me, oh Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence me, oh Jesus, Jesus.
Thank you.